Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, um, it was one of the videos that Tim Pole had talked about, you know, where it was, uh, Destiny and this other guy, I forgot his name, he was one conservative, were talking and how they agree on one thing and that's basically, you know, the big business, the oligarchs or whatever you call these sort of people are to blame as far as that goes. You know, and uh, one of the things here is that it's one of the biggest fears that when it comes to the oligarchs, whether they're on the left or on the right, is having the the lay people or whatever they would have the name for us, you know, banding together and taking down the oligarchs of that, as far as that goes, or at least make them pay for their sins and, you know, of that sort. You know what I mean? And a lot of times they were trying to kind of prevent that sort of thing from happening, you know, especially what had happened with the Tea Party movement, you know, the the Occupy movement in a way. Because as I said before on this sort of thing there that those movements had a bit of crossover from either side because there were part of people that were that were on the left that supported the Tea Party when it came to the early incarnation of the Tea Party just as much as there were people on the right that supported the early incarnation of the Occupy movement but then as far as the when these moves had gained traction, it started to kind of morph into what it became at that point, you know. But some people had speculated that when it came to some of it, there, there might have been moles that been brought by the establishment, oligarchics, or whatever you call these sort of people to kind of you know, derail the whole movement or cause it to become something else that what it what it was entirely, you know? As far as that goes. You know what I mean? Because of the fact there is if the Tea Party movement and the the Occupy movement were successful in the end, they would have basically gotten a lot of reforms down when it came to the government, as well as a lot of re reorganization, restructurization, and that sort of thing when it comes to the government and, you know, that sort of thing. So, Considering all that, it was like the same thing that was happening back when it came to the 2016 presidential election. You know, how Bernie Sanders was cheated there. Because there was a lot of people on the left and there were certain people on the right that also rallied behind Bernie Sanders just as much as there were people on the right that rallied behind Trump as well as there were people that were on the left that rallied behind Trump secretly at that point. Yeah? And that was one of the things there was the threat of this populism coming from the left or the right and that the establishment was trying to protect their um uh, their way of life at least as far as that goes and 
considering all of that, it is kind of still happening to this point there because of how the establishment, you know, when it comes to the Democratic Party, and to a certain extent when it comes to the Republicans, you know, wanting to, to maintain the status quo and, and that sort of thing there. But it's one of those things there that they're, they're just swimming against the current, you know. And sooner or later, they're going to get tired and they're going to get swept off into the current like that as far as that goes. And it's just one of those little things, you know, in the long run, it wouldn't really even matter anyways because the people that are really in this sort of establishment thing, you know, when it comes to Pelosi... Biden or Schumer and and uh, I keep forgetting his name again. Uh, McConnell, you know, they're already at that point where where they're just one foot in the grave, you know, and sooner or later, you know, any one of them will keel over, you know, and that'll be the end of it, you know. Because that's just one of the bigger things that is a result of it. You know, when it comes to progress and all that there. Is it's going to happen eventually. You know, whether they like it or not. You know, but considering the other aspect of this sort of stuff here. Is there's just... A lot of other things that I kind of wanted to talk about there, but but that could be like said for another video, you know what I mean? But I think for now, we're already at a midst of this sort of systemic, you know, change of that sort. But I think it's been this sort of way since probably like 20. 14, 20, 15 of that sort. But that's kind of like where, you know, the whole um, Gen Z was coming of age at that point. Yeah. And in the same vein, you know, the millennials are now, you know, heading into midlife. The the Gen Xers are now going to the elder stage and you know and then what comes after that sort of thing the the geriatric stage or for the baby boomers of that sort you know and then whatever comes after that sort of thing for the the silent generation because after all, I mean, there is a new generation of kids that are already growing up at this point, the Gen Alpha. So it's just um, the whole thing, the course of life, all that itself at that point. You know, and the way I see it, that it's just that there are just certain people that need to just, you know, pass the baton or go to pasture that sort of thing you know and that's pretty much what it is yeah but I think if that was like the case 20 years ago when it came to that you know there was a lot of other problems that might have caused this sort of thing you know because of the baby boomers were still holding on to the jobs, not retiring, and not allowing the the Gen Xers to move up, not allowing the the millennials to come in and all this, and it was causing all these other problems. But that is just something else for another day. So anyways, talk to you guys later.